Hello, my name is Adam and welcome back to my channel where I make a tabletop role-playing game from scratch on camera. And today, I actually didn't hit record before I started. Uh, now, of course, I was able to fix the mistake uh, slightly, but uh, that's what happens when you're working with ink. So I'm just gonna go through it and just gonna tell you what I was thinking. So this is a mechanic I've used several times in my game. And in my mind it works, but I'm putting it out there for other people to try. This is my time pool mechanic. Well, it's actually not mine, it's mostly stolen from the time pool mechanic from the angry GM and I bet he stole it from someone else too. I'll leave a link to his blog post in the description and if you know any mechanic like this, please let me know down in the comments. I won't be surprised if it's rooted in some OSR mechanic. So what is this time pool mechanic? In situations where time is of essence, you as the GM start a time pool. Time then gets split into rounds and every character has an action during a round. Actions are split into partial and full actions. You can do one full action and as many partial actions as you want per round. At least a reasonable amount of partial actions. You resolve all the partial actions first and then the full actions. Full actions are defined as actions that take the whole round to complete, while partial actions don't or can be done in parallel with the full actions, like talking. Now this may feel like it's clogging the flow of the game by quantifying the time of everything all the characters do, but it honestly doesn't when I've tried it. Players don't have to resolve complicated actions like you do in D&D combat. It's more a mental note where you try to make an estimate on how much time has passed. And there's three modes of time as well to make it more complicated. Uh, travel, exploration and danger. In travel mode, each round is about four hours. In exploration mode, each round is about 10 minutes. And in danger mode, each round is about 10 seconds. So what does these rounds and actions have to do with anything? This is where the time pool and complications come in. Every round you, as the GM, add a die to the time pool. The die depends on the hostility or tension in the area. Peaceful places are d12. Dangerous areas are d4. And once the time pool is 6 dice, you roll for complications and reset the time pool to 0 dice. Those of you who have been paying attention might have noticed that six rounds in travel mode equals 24 hours, six rounds in exploration mode equals one hour, and six rounds in danger mode equals one minute. And this is an optimal time for players to tick off rations, durations on spells, etc. I'm not quite sure if I'll use it in this way because there's an obvious problem with this approach, and I'll get back to that.
But I haven't talked about complications. Specific actions trigger a roll for complications. You pick up the dice and roll them. It's actually more exciting if a player does it, so let one of them roll the dice. If any of the dice is a 1, a complication occurs. That could be anything you want. A trap, a crumbling ceiling, an ambush, equipment breaks, whatever. Something bad. If you roll 6 dice, you remove all of them from the time pool, aka reset it. If there's less than 6 dice, you only remove one die. So where's the fun in this? Well, I think games should have meaningful decisions. And that is where the players can start to decide their character's action. Because not only do I categorize actions in full and partial actions, but also stressed and calm actions. Stressed actions are loud, sloppy and fast, while calm actions are careful, silent and time-consuming. If you have a locked door in front of you, you can use a calm, full action to lockpick the door. It will take 10 minutes, but it's most likely an automatic success. Or you can kick the door down as a stressed partial action. It only takes 30 seconds, but it's loud and you might fail to. Doing a calm action does nothing. Doing a stressed action prompts a complication roll. And this is where the meaningful decisions come in. Do you want to take calm actions which usually have a high success rate or even automatically succeed, but that are time consuming? Or do you want to rush through things which is more risky and more dangerous? The best part is when you say that players have two hours before the summoning ritual is complete, so the players can't do calm actions all the time, but have to choose when they can afford to do calm actions. The time pool also has an inbuilt tension mechanic. When you start the time pool, there's maybe one or two dice there then it's very little consequence of doing stressed actions. The risk of rolling a 1 is low, and you have a surplus of resources. This means that players rush towards the actual action of the story, and as they do, they have to be more and more careful. Lastly, a trick that I found out was extremely effective was that if the players spend a lot of time discussing and planning in the middle of a dungeon or something, you can just plop a die in the time pool because the characters have just wasted 10 minutes on talking. They quickly realize that they have to be more efficient. If you're curious about all the details, you can check my itch.io page where I've uploaded the draft. I think that as it's written now, it's system agnostic, so you can easily adapt it to your own game if you want to try it. So, the problem with this system. Well, as you might have noticed, there are three modes here for different timescales. I've tried two different approaches. One is that you have three different time pools that you switch between when players are doing stuff. Players does overworld travel with two travel turns, then going into a dungeon for three exploration turns, then return on round three to do some more travel. It works if you want the time to be precise. Every time the pool is reset, you can tick off one day, an hour, or a minute. But it's a lot of work. Going in and out of combat specifically. The other solution is to just merge them all into one pool. And I've done that. It's very simple, very elegant, but you lose the reset that triggers the different durations. I've actually added both of the rules on itch, 
So you can have a look at both and you can try whichever you find works best. Then give me some feedback on which direction to choose or if you know a third option I haven't tried before. So that's it for this video. Be sure to download the draft down in the descriptions, comment on what you think about it and of course like and subscribe. And don't forget to share this with your GM, they'll probably like it. See ya!